So moving on to interviews, what sort of interviews will graduates most likely face? I do think it's going to be a competency-based interview. So I'm going to talk about competencies now, but in all these other exercises, we're not just making judgments on this is the process, this is the content. It's all related to, um, to competencies. So it's not going to be what do you think of this or what's your view of that one. What we're looking for is examples about how you've done things in the past. So can you give me an example about when you've demonstrated drive? Can you give me an example about when you've had to be flexible because you've had limited resources? So think about these examples in advance. Most people know about STAR, which is situation, task, action, and result, but they don't always do what they know. I mean, there's, there's different acronyms, but, but basically we need to understand a specific example about how you've done something and what the end result was. That's what I coach my clients to do. At some of the assessment centres I go to, that's what I'll say as part of my introduction. I'm going to be looking for a specific example, and I tell them what I'm looking for, just as a reminder, and then they don't do it. They go, oh, well, when I'm working with people, and it's all this general stuff that comes back, it's not specific. It's not really addressing the question that I've asked, mm -hmm. and they're not going to be performing well. You should find out what the competencies are you're going to look for. And if it's a particular organization and one of the competencies is commercial awareness, then you need to think about how you can demonstrate that. You can't just say, well, I'm just out of uni. I've never had to. Well, think about the part-time work that you've had. Think about some of the assignments you've done. Think about some internships or voluntary work. You need to be able to provide an answer and an example. You can't just say, no, I haven't got that because not really coming across as very, as a, as, you're not coming across as very well if, if that's how you respond. And believe me, people say that frequently. Sorry, I don't really have an example about that one. Well, duh. Um, that's you a quarter down on the interview now. And as you said, the companies aren't shy about promoting what their, what their values or competencies are. They're normally front and centre in the middle of the application page online. Yes, because generally when you're applying online, you're having to give examples as part of the application process, so you should know what they are. Um, and you can use the same examples. Sometimes people say to me, I, I've already used this one on my application form. Can I use it again? Well, of course you can. You know, I haven't got your application. I'm not comparing what you've written on your application. And the application was to get you to interview or the assessment centre. Now, yes, please, you can use that again. And also you can take the same examples, such as... Um, uh, a part-time job that you had and you can can use that to demonstrate working as part of a team dealing with problems showing resilience it can all relate to the same example it's not that you can only use a particular thing once what would be the top three tips that you give candidates for how to ace an interview the first thing is um, answer the questions listen I mean honestly it's the key one listen and answer the questions and, oh, what am I going to do for it? I don't know. Listen listen to the question. Make sure you answer it. Prepare examples in advance. And at the end, when they say to you, have you got any questions, don't just say, well, you seem to have answered everything. It's such a weak end ending. Ask questions and avoid things like, what sort of holidays are there? How much do you pay? What sort of development are you going to do? I want you to ask me questions about the organization that you're applying to. What are some of the key challenges that are facing the organization? Read things about the organization. If you're applying to go onto a supermarket scheme, goodness, there's been so much in the news, you know, today as we as we're, we're recording this. So, you know, you might you might want to say, you know, um, Morrison's um, decision to, to price match against um, against Little and Aldi, if you're going for the, the, the Morrison uh, graduate scheme, you know, what impact is that going to have on the business bottom line? You know, it shows that you're paying attention to what's in the news. As you said, I think, you know, listening to the actual question is such a key one because so many times you ask someone a question and they answer with, well, thank you for your question, but here's something that I want to tell you about. No, they think they're training politicians. And it's not, it's not clever. And even if you don't know the answer, um, you know, it's better to say, to say something like, well, actually, I don't have an example of having dealt with a difficult customer. And you know, it's, that's an interesting question because I've often wondered about that because other people I talk to always seem to be having to, to deal with that situation. And I think what it is is I'm the sort of person that, that 
that listens to customers and always wants to do a good job. So we never reach a point where they are difficult because I can respond well. So for an example, if when a customer comes to me and they've got a, a query, this is how I deal with it. And then maybe to say at the end, now I know that wasn't addressing your question about dealing with an, a difficult customer because, you know, I think I've been lucky because my customers aren't difficult. But actually, I don't think it is luck. I think it's about the way I've always handled customers. Something like that would... I'd probably be quite oppressed about that. And I might come back and you say, really? Have you never had a difficult customer? Well, what, what sort of customers are the most challenging that you've had to deal with? You know, what are the ones that have tested your your personal responses? So, you know, assessors will sometimes come back. Um, it's not just we ask a question... You speak, and then we ask the next question. We're going to test you out a bit as well. Thinking back to when I went through the process, I'm sure oh, I know for a fact that I answered uh, when I was asked if I had any questions at the end. I know I said, actually, yeah, I think you've answered them all. Yeah. Um, so I I've fallen foul of some of your what not to yeah. do already. I, I, I think what well, I think is really good, James, is to actually write some questions down in advance. So I think if you write things down in advance, and then literally you've got them written down. Either, because you don't want them on your, your iPad, so you've got to find it in a bag. But, you know, a, a woman would probably have them in a handbag, easy to pull out. You might have it in your jacket pocket. But so you have to, I came up with eight questions. Open it up and say, you've answered seven of them. The one question that you haven't answered is, and then on the very rare occasion where you have answered them all, they have answered them all, you can say, like, well, I came up with five questions and you've answered them all. Look, here they are. And sort of make it as a bit of a joke thing.